on behalf of the Kayako team, welcome to today's webinar. Today we're going to show you how to use SLAs, which stands for Service Level Agreements, to ensure that you're meeting your customer expectations. Now if you're not using SLAs, but you still want to make sure that you're meeting your customer expectations, don't worry, this webinar is still going to be a really great resource for you. So I hope everyone is comfortable and uh, we can get started. But first, uh, in case any of you are new to Kayako, let's brief briefly review who uh, we are as a company. Who is Kayako? Kayako is a customer service software company that is built to scale as you grow. Uh, we've been around for over 14 years. We have over 140 employees working uh, fully committed to make sure that our customers are getting better at customer service and not just supplying a software platform. As most of you listening in on this presentation are probably customers, hopefully you know by now that the Kayako support team is readily available for you to help ensure that you are successful in your, in your roles. And you can always reach us through email at support at kayako.com, via live chat, and of course the Kayako Help Center and the forums. So without further ado, let's get started. My name is Alicia and I'm a product marketing manager here at Kayako. And now I have the pleasure of turning it over to my colleagues Kushal and Sandeep and they're going to introduce themselves to you. So Kushal, why don't you take it away? Hi everyone, thank you for joining us today. My name is Kushal and I will be answering your questions in this webinar. If there are any questions you would like to ask, please drop them in the GoToWebinar questions window and I will be happy to talk to you at the end. Now Sandeep will take it further to talk about SLAs. Sandeep, over to you. Hey everyone, this is Sandeep. Um, I work as a customer advocate at Kayako and one thing I absolutely love about my job is helping people. So today we are going to talk about SLAs. What is an SLA? An SLA is basically a contract to provide service within an agreed time frame. Different industries have different terminolo uh, terminology to explain SLAs. Uh, some of them uh, call it as uh, customer response metrics and different industries have different names. And usually when someone says the word SLA, it is linked with the service industry. But overall, it is spread across all the industries in different ways. Even if it is a retail industry, the time frame that you give to your customers to deliver the product to them is a kind of SLA that you have for your customers. So no matter which type of industry are you or are you from, which kind of business are you from, knowingly or unknowingly, there is somewhere you are linked with the topic, which is SLA. So this is what we will cover in today's webinar. So the main things that we are going to talk about are why do we need SLA? And how do you determine an SLA? When I say why, so the question that we need to ask ourselves is, why do I need a time frame to provide the service within to my customer? Why do I have to have a clock ticking um, over my head, let's say? So, and why do I have to be answerable to my customers when I have to provide service to them? Once we answer those questions, the next question that we need to answer is, how do you draw the line? How do you determine what is the agreement that you have to sign with your customers? How do you decide as a business based in central London that you have to give this time frame to deliver products to your customers who are based in West London or who are based in the east part of your uh, east part of the city or any other part of the city? So how do you decide that? So we'll be answering uh, both these questions, why SLAs and how do you determine SLAs? And before we go any further, Throughout the webinar, when we talk about these things, I want you to think about your business. When we talk about each and every point, I want you to relate it to your business and see how does it impact you or how it can impact you and how it can create value for your business. So this, these are the things that I want you to think, think about throughout the business, uh, throughout the webinar, and I maybe pose your questions uh, side by side. So if there is anything that you think that how does it relate to your business and you want to discuss, you can always pose your questions um, in this, in the GoToWebinar meeting message box. So first of all, um, we are going to talk about why we need SLAs. Because we need SLAs because they create value for your customers. And we'll talk about the values that they create for your customers. To start with, if you have an SLA plan, 
in place, it helps you to set right expectations for your customers. Uh, let me explain it with an example. So let's say you are in retail business and you have your customers placing orders online through your website and when they place an order, you would give them a confirmation that your order would be delivered within 24 hours. So that is the kind of SLA that you provide to your customers. In that case, the customer you set a right expectation for your customer because the customer knows that he has to wait for, the, for 24 hours for the delivery to be made to his doorstep. So in that case, you are setting right expectations. And imagine that if you have no SLA plan in place and the customer places an order from your website and he doesn't know when to expect the delivery and when to hear back from you. So in that case, you're leaving the customer in the dark and the customer has no knowledge about when or how or when to expect the delivery. So in that case, if you have an SLA in place, you are setting the right expectation for your customer as to when can he expect to get hear back from you or when can he expect to get his order delivered or when can he expect to get his system back up, depending on the nature of your business. So that's that. Once you set right expectation, the next thing it leads to is less friction because you have already set the expectation. That means the customer knows when to expect it. He doesn't need to come back and contact you every now and then about the status of your of his request that he has logged with you or about the status of his delivery uh, about his product that he has purchased from you. And because and reason being because he doesn't need to contact you from time, time and again about for an update, that means it, it leads to less friction. And because you have an SLA plan in place, this means all your staff members are aware of it and they would all be giving a, a unified answer to your customer that, okay, this is, a, this is the time frame we have set for this kind of request and this is when you can expect to hear back from us. Whereas, if there is no SLA plan in place, and all your support team members or your staff members are not aware of any SLA plan in place, they could be answering different answers to the customer when he contacts you through different re, uh, different channels. In that case, he friction because the customer might get irritated that he's getting different answers from different people, but the problem is this is happening because you don't have an agreement in place by which you have to stick to. So in that case, if you have an SLA in place, it leads to less friction when dealing with your customers and their requests. Next up is measuring success. So if you have an agreement in place, your customers know how to review the service that they have received from you. So let's say um, you have 24 hours deadline to deliver the product that they have purchased from your website. And the customer knows that if it is delivered, within 10 hours or 12 hours of the of the agreement that they have signed that means you have provided a good service to them in that case they know how to review you against something so this is how it helps you to measure success as in how much value you have created for your customer or how much value as a business you have created for yourself because you have created value to the customer and it is these customers who bring value back to the business next up if you have an SLA in place, that means you're never going to miss a deadline. Uh, let me explain that with an example. So let's uh, consider that you are an IT department within a company and you deal with different kinds of requests. So let's say you have a um, request to deal with, you know, the, uh, the telephone is not working or the laptop is broken or there is a new joiner in a different department um, in the next week, during the next week, or there is someone who is leaving the company and you have a request coming in. So imagine if you're handling all of this through emails, so you have to go through emails and it leads to a lot of time wastage because uh, you don't know who is working on which email and there's a lot of, you know, kind of overlapping of work that happens because of that. Imagine, and now if we switch that to a ticketing tool, uh, or a help desk where you have SLAs in place, that means everything gets sorted on its own. So let's say um, there is a new joiner in a department and the manager logs a request, new joiner request with your IT department. And you have an SLA in place that every time there is a new joiner request logged with the IT department, you need a minimum of five days to fulfill that request. 
reason being you have to get the assets ready you have to get the different accounts ready you have to get everything re required for the person or different kinds of accesses that you need to give to the new joiner and in all that you need minimum of five days to get everything up to the mark in that case once you have set that deadline for the all kinds of new joiner requests that means the manager who is going to log a request is aware that he has to log a request five days prior to the person joining his team. In that, uh, whereas if you don't have an SLA in place, there are chances the manager might send in a request or an email a day before the person is about to start, the, uh, start work. And in that case, you might very much miss a deadline because the email might have come at the last hour and you don't have enough time to get everything up to, up to the mark to get the person started on his first day at work. So this is where SLAs create value to your customers. And now these customers can be both external or internal, as I mentioned in this one example for you. So that's that. And then we have, if you have SLAs in plan, then you have, prior, you have the possibility to prioritize your customers. So let's say you have different SLA plans and you have premium customers who pay extra to your business because they want the service to be quick. They want everything to be answered and returned on time as quickly as possible. In that case, you can have an SLA plan in place called premium SLA plan, which your customers can buy from you. In that case, you're creating a premium value for your customers, whereas you can have uh, usual customer, uh, usual SLA plans in place as well, usual agreement where, um, let's say, in the, if it is a pre, if someone buys a premium SLA plan from you, that means you are returning the service within two hours. And if someone buys a casual SLA plan from you, that means you are returning the request in four hours for that person, or for that customer. In that case, you are creating different kinds of values for your customers. And in this case, um, when we say premium and non-premium, you are create you are still creating value for your customer because. It could be someone is starting a new business and they're not able to afford uh, the premium one right now. They can still go for the non-premium one. But in a way, it is creating a value for your business. So these are the values which SLAs or the service level agreements bring to your customers. It could be setting right expectations because they know upfront how much time it will take to deal with their request. Uh, then next one is less friction because they don't have to keep coming back to you for an update on, your requ on their request. And they have something to measure you against. And then you never miss a deadline. That is, everything is taken care of itself because the SLA keeps ticking. And when it goes overdue, you're notified that this has gone overdue and it needs your attention. So, and finally, you get to prioritize your customers as premium, non-premium, or different categories of SLAs that you can create for your customers. So that's all about creating values to your customer through the SLAs. Next, so first we just we understood the why why we need an SLA because it creates value. Next, as promised, we are going to talk about how do you determine that what an SLA should be, what the agreement should be like, and where do you draw the line? Whether you say two hours, or how do you decide whether it should be four hours or it should be six hours? How do you decide that? What should be the basis for that? So to start with, the first thing that you can start if you are starting from scratch. You can look at industry standards. So let's say you are in finance industry and you have to stick to certain compliance. And in that case, because you have to stick to industry standards, you can look for uh, what are the, the other companies around you and like what kind of SLS do they follow. You can do research on that and follow the industry standards. But the other, but the thing to be made uh, to be kept in mind is there are other factors too. Even when you go for industry standards, there are other factors which will always influence when you decide the SLA plans. We'll talk about them later. The one of the benefits that you get if you stick to industry standards is that you clearly get to compare yourself against what other companies in the same industry are performing at or what level they are at. Because at the end of the day, the reason why we have SLAs in place and why we measure them is because we want to see where we stand against the other companies, where we stand the other people in the same industry. Because let's say if someone has, if the industry standard says that 92% is the minimum S is the maximum that the industry is meeting when it comes to SLAs and you end up 
making it 93%. So you can easily boast, yeah, that I have, or you perform better than the overall industry that you are in. So in that case, you get to compare yourself against the other, other companies. So that's that. And then the other factor or the other way to determine an agreement is that you can talk to your customers. When I say talk to your customers, um, it may not be possible for every kind of business to talk to your customer and decide on an SLA. Again, it depends the kind of business that you are in. So let's say you are a freelancer and you deal with one customer. And what you can do is you can talk to the customer and sign an agreement or come to an agreement that this is the time frame within which I would deliver the project to you or this is the minimum time frame I need to get started or any kind of discussion that you want to have you with your customer. So that's another kind of way that you can decide on an SLA. So you can talk to your customer depending on the nature of your business or because this is clearly not uh, possible if you have thousands of customers, you can't go out and talk to each one of them and decide, and, uh, decide on an SLA. So again, clearly it depends on the nature of business that you are in. Next up is look at your team's capacity when deciding an SLA plan. This is quite an important one. As one of our own customers, um, when, to, when we asked them about how do they set up SLAs in their company, um, so he one of the best practices that he shared is that uh, don't set them by what you think they should be, but how they work in your organization and what time do you realistically need for that. So he clearly meant that, okay, you can decide on any other factor, but at the end of the day, it depends your, at your, on your team's capacity. You may go for industry standards, but w one thing that comes into action is that could be that the other company has 20 people and you have 10 people dealing with the same number of requests. So this won't be the right comparison that you can make. In that case, your team's capacity comes into action. It plays a very important role. So in this case, when I say look at your team's capacity, what I mean is that you have to look at the workload that your team needs to handle and what sort of work that they need to deal with. Is it, um, they, do they deal with the deliveries? Are you in the retail sector? Do they deal with the network that they have to keep the network running all the time? Do they de deal with the system or software? Do they, what kind of business do they deal with? and how many people do you have looking after these kind of requests? So it all comes into action. So instead of burdening them with strict SLAs because you have to stick to industry standards, it, it's always, always wise to look at your team's capacity first and then you can always work around that. So that's that. Next we have, um, you know, when you decide on an SLA, there are different kinds of SLAs. So it could be service-based, it could be customer-based. So depending on the kind of SLA that you're going to sign or the SLA that you're going to provide to your customers, you can decide which one do you want to go with. So when we say service-based uh, service SLA, so if you're going to sign a service-based SLA, in that case, you need to think about, uh, you know, the, the situations that can come in the nature of your business. So let's say you provide a network service to your customers and all of them use the same service and imagine all of a sudden the network goes down. That means you could be dealing with your uh, with hundreds of requests at a time and, uh, and being realistic, you should be able to keep that in mind that if that happens, would you be able to handle hundreds of requests with an agreement of two hours of returning to every request. So it is this kind of thing that you need to keep in mind when you decide on, a, on an SLA. So if it is service-based SLA, that means you need to think about how many customers you support and do you support all of them on the same, uh, on the same level and how are you going to deal with them if you have hundreds of coming, requests coming to you in, in an hour or so when the service goes down. So this is the thing that you need to keep in mind when you decide on an SLA which is service-based. Next is customer-based. So in this case, as we talked about, uh, you know, premium SLA plans, non-premium customers, and these kind of things. So if you're going to set an SLA based on a, for a customer, that means for a particular organization, let's say Amazon Web Service and uh, Web Services, and they have uh, different customers, and they could be dealing, uh, signing a particular contract 
with a particular organization. So in that case, they are setting customer-based SLA. In that case, yes, you can very much talk to your customer if you have to, and then depending on how much the how much impact your service can have on customer's business, in that case, you can always negotiate or talk to the customer and then decide accordingly. So this is all about how you decide on an SLA. So you look at the industry standards and then you talk to your customers depending on nature of your business and you always, always keep in mind the, your team's capacity. How much workload can they handle and how much, because at the end of the day, you don't want to compromise on the quality of the service that you provide. So it is better uh, to under promise and over deliver. And then finally, service-based and customer-based. What kind of SLAs are you going to sign with your customers? That also comes into action. So this is all about how you decide on an SLA for your support team. Now that we have decided on the SLAs that we want for different kind of requests or services that we provide, uh, we need to see whether we made the right decision and how do we do that? How do we know that we have made the right decision? Okay, we have signed an agreement with the customer that for every request that you uh, log with us or for every order that you purchase from our website or for every internal request that you place for broken printer or um, a broken laptop, uh, what? how do I measure that I did the right thing? So in that case, this is the continuous cycle that you always need to follow. It's, SLAs are never stagnant. They're always changing depending on the situations, depending on um, the factors, that various factors that you have. It could be that today you have 10 members supporting, um, uh, providing support. Tomorrow it could be five or it could be 12 tomorrow. So in that case, you have to keep recycling these kind of things. So when so the cycle that it says is you decide an SLA plan, then you measure it over time. That is, you collect data over time. Uh, so let's say you have started with an SLA plan for a new joiner request of five days. You gather data for the next six months for all the new joiner requests that come in, and then you analyze that data. We'll talk more about analyzing data later. Uh, that is, how what all can you do with the data that you collect We'll talk about it. So you analyze that data based on the, w what you collect over the, over the six months after, after you implement the SLA plan. And you decide whether five days was enough for every new joiner request that comes in, or does it have to be three, or does it have to be like seven? So, it, so that's how you analyze data once you implement the things. And then you refine it. Depending on that, once you do the analysis, you refine the data that whether it needs to be changed or whether it's good to go as it is. So these kind of things, this is a continuous cycle that you always run with you, within your organization or with the, for your business to always stay on top of things. Okay, there goes the interesting bit. So how does SLAs work in Kayaku? Or how do you set them up? So this is all we are going to talk about now. So the main reason why we started, when we started, we said that the main reason why we have SLAs in place is because we want to create value to our customers. And how do we create that value? So, so this, when you have customizable schedules in, uh, I'll walk you through all of these steps in uh, practically as well. And how do they, how do you set them all up? And we'll share, where, uh, we'll share, um, you know, the other documents as well, the relevant documents that you would need to set up SLAs in Kayako. So everything would be shared with you at the end. So when I talk about customizable schedules, I say, uh, so what happens is you don't want the SLAs to be ticking and going overdue when it is your offline hours. From customizable schedules, what you can do is you can decide the SLA to take or to, uh, to run only during your working hours. So let's say uh, you operate nine to five, and so what you would ideally want is that that SLA takes only from nine to five, and it stops at five o'clock when you close the business, because you don't want it to go overdue. And if it goes overdue while you're offline or while you're off uh, work off work hours, what happens is it will impact your stats because it will show that you're missing deadlines all the time, which is not correct because it is going overdue when you're not we're not 
when it is your off business hours. So in that case, these customizable schedules help you because you can set them up as 9 to 5, 10 to 7, 11 to 8, or 24 hours depending on uh, your business hours. Next is uh, we have a um, vast set of criteria based on which you can set the SLA plan. And when you set an SLA plan or when you want that the ticket that comes in should have an SLA plan implemented, it is, it is implemented based on a particular criteria. And that criteria can be set up when you set up an SLA plan. And we have a long list of criteria that you can choose from. Uh, you can uh, choose an SLA based on the priority of the ticket. So let's say uh, uh, you want that every ticket which comes in with high priority should have um, a reply deadline of two hours. So that's pretty much possible with the criteria available. Or um, as we talked about premium customers, so if you have um, premium SLA plans that you uh, sign with your customers in that case and it's like 10 people who bought your premium SLA plans from you and you want to group them together so that their whenever their requests come in this particular the premium SLA gets applied on them so you group them into a user group and then based on the user group you set up an SLA plan so there are different criteria that you can use as part of the SLA plans in Kayako. Next you have um, custom holidays and uh, let's say you are part of a global team which is based which has members in the Americas or the Europe or in Asia or different parts of the world and they all have different holidays as well so it, there could be global holidays and there could be regional holidays so what Kayaka lets you do is um, you can link SLA plans uh, you can link holidays with SLA plans that means if the SLA plan or if the staff member or the customer is based in that region, the SLA plan would not tick. Based and if it is a holiday in that region, the SLA plan would not tick during that time. Next is um, user based and organization based. So you uh, so it could be that there is a group of users you want to group together and give them an SLA, or it could be that you want to set an SLA plan for one particular user. So what happens is if you set a user-based SLA plan in Kayako, it will always override the other SLA plans and the person would always get the SLA plan assigned to him. You can provide premium service to one particular, one particular customer if you have to. Next is organization-based. It is similar to user-based and again it will override if you have it in place. So in that case what happens is, for example, you have 10 people from a particular organization and this organization decides to buy a special SLA plan from you um, and then what you can do is you can uh, when you enter the organization into Kayako Help Desk you can link an SLA plan with the organization so any person who belongs to that organization would have this SLA plan linked with their organization implemented on all of their tickets in that case again you can provide customized service to your, custom, uh, to your customers so that's how Kayako brings value through SLAs because it gives you a lot of customization to be able to add different kinds of SLAs under different criteria and different and also to meet the needs of your global teams who are spread which are spread across the group. So these are the different kind of things which you can do through SLAs in Kayako. Next up um, is escalations. So usually um, what happens is uh, depending on the nature of the business some of the people they may not use escalations they may only stick to SLAs but if you happen to use escalations along with SLAs you can unleash a lot of efficiency in your business processes or overall business I'll explain how that can be achieved so uh, let's say um, you know usually what happens is escalations they are pretty much part of the SLAs and when you have SLA the reason why you set SLA is because you want to track the time frame within which you provide the service and when you if you fail to provide the service there should be something because at the end of the day if you're not tracking it if you're not tracking the SLA and you're not tracking any action once the SLA goes overdue 
then you're not unleashing the complete potential of the SLAs. So if you have es escalations in place, that means you can do a lot more with the SLAs in place. So this is why you would always hear that they go hand in hand with the SLAs. In Kayako, you can have uh, different kinds of escalations. You can uh, decide an, SLA, uh, an escalation based on reply due time. That is, if, if, the SLA, if the reply time provided in the SLA plan is missed, that means you can escalate a ticket. Or you can decide it based on the resolution. So let's say you missed the resolution defined in the SLA plan. And you can raise, you can escalate a ticket based on that. So there are different things that based on which you can escalate a ticket once the SLA has been missed, whether the reply due missed or the resolution due time which is missed. And when I say um, it can bring in a lot of efficiency, it is automated tasks that I'm talking about. So there are vast number of, um, there are quite a lot of automated tasks that you can perform as part of the escalations. Um, I'll walk you through each one of them. And uh, so what happens is, so let's say you have a ticket escalated and as part of the automated task, you can um, add the tag saying escalated. And then at the end of the month, you can run a report on how many tickets which had the tag escalated on them. So you know that how many tickets got escalated or how many requests which came in, they got, des and they got escalated or how many times did you fail to del uh, pr uh, deliver the product which was purchased from your website on time. So these are the different things which you can do as part of the automated task. You can change the ticket status to uh, whichever one you want. To. You can take the t uh, ticket priority to critical. So these are the different automated tasks which you can perform as part of the automated task. Next, you can send notifications as well. Because after all, if you're escalating, that means you are notifying someone. Um, in that case, uh, what you, do, you can do is you can send uh, to different stakeholders, you can send it to the team or to the person himself who is assigned uh, to the ticket or to the user. So there are different people that you can send the notification to that the ticket has missed its deadline and now you need to pay attention to that. And it is uh, again um, uh, one of our customers, they used to deal with all kinds of requests through email but when they switched to help desk, so they said that they can now save 10 minutes for every request that comes in reason being they don't have to stay uh, keep an eye on things because automatically if they if the SLA is missed or if there is something that missed their attention it gets escalated and they get notified automatically so in a way that they can focus on actually delivering the service to their customers instead of keeping an eye on different things that that need attention because they don't have to pay attention to these things it is automatically taken care of and there are different kinds of escalation you can do. So let's say, um, you know, you are um, in a business and uh, you have you deal with a refund request as well. In that case, it could be that the person who is who is dealing at the front line with these kind of requests, he may not have that much of authority to deal with these requests, and he may have to, uh, you know, kind of um, escalate it to the manager. So this is one kind of escalation that you can have. Or it could be skills-based escalation. So let's say that a request comes in and uh, you particularly don't have the skills to deal with that. And you have to escalate it. And then you escalate that ticket to someone else because that person holds the skills to deal with that. So these are the escalations that you can have in place if you want to try it based on your requirement. And, um, you know, uh, or um, there's a you have like a layered kind of escalation. So let's say... Uh, you missed an SLA and then for the first time you escalated to um, your uh, team lead, so someone who is senior to you and uh, it gets escalated and se even during the second time again it misses the SLA and this time you need to escalate it to someone higher. Uh, so these kind of escalations you can set up. In Kayako you need uh, to set up cron task because this is what automates the process for you and uh, the escalation process for you. Again, as I mentioned, we'll be sharing all the documentation for that. Uh, so we'll not go that much detail into how to set up a cron task because if you're an on-demand business uh, or on-demand or uh, hosted um, help desk uh, on our servers, we'll do that for you. And if you're on download version, then we'll share the instructions with you on how to set it up on your server. So all that will be taken care of at the end of the webinar when, you, when we send you every all the recording and the other related documents to you. 
So this is all about escalations. What do escalations do? They, you know, you can perform a lot of automated tasks as part of it. You can send email notifications. So just letting you focus on actually delivering the service and not bothering about the, all the other things that you need to take care of. And then you can have different types of escalations, um, hierarchy-based or skills-based or, you know, every the other ones that I mentioned. So you can have these kind of things in place. So that's all about escalations. And I'll, I'll quickly walk you through how um, to show you how it all works in Hierarchical uh, based on the settings. So we go through it. So this is the admin panel that you are in. Uh, you will see that this is the SLA option that you have. So this is where you can um, go ahead with your SLA plans if you need to create them. So these are all the options that you have. So uh, remember <coughs> I mentioned about, <coughs> sorry, and remember I mentioned about uh, setting your team schedule. You have customizable schedules uh, that you can set up in, in Kayako. So the first to start with will set up the team schedule. That is for how long do they work, 9 to 5 or 10 to 7 and these kind of things. So you have the schedules here. By default, you will have the default one because when you even when you sign up for a trial or when you set up the help desk, uh, there there will be a default schedule present in it. You can either modify that or create a new one from here. So here you go. So you can, if you are open 24 hours, you then you can select this option because your business is open 24 hours. That means the SLA would tick for all the 24 hours, and you can select the days that you are closed on. So if you are, if you work Monday through Friday, then you can select only these days and weekends off, or depending on w whichever requirement you have. And then you have custom option as well. So like I mentioned that you, if you work 10 to 7 or 9 to 5, and then you have custom option here. So you will see. So you have 9 to 5 here. So you can decide it for different days, whichever way you work. And then you decide the custom schedule here. Remember, this decides for how long your SLA should take. And then you. So that's done. First, we did the schedule. And now we are going to create an SLA plan, which will be linked with that schedule. So we go back to SLAs and plans. Again, there will be a default SLA plan present. You can either edit it or create a new one here. And then go back to plans. Next. There you go. So SLA, this is how you create the SLA plan. So you have the screen, and then you add the title for your SLA plan, or you can call it premium SLA plan for your premium customers, or normal or high priority SLA plan for all the tickets which come in with high priority, and these kind of things. So you can name it here. And then you give the time frame that within which the reply should be made. Uh, sorry. So you decide within which the reply deadline. So let's say if for this SLA plan, the reply has to be made within two hours. And that's how you decide. And then similarly, you decide the resolution deadline for the SLA plan that you're going to implement. So sorry, that's a small mistake here. So you have to add a number that is a deadline that you want to set for this SLA plan. And then. Remember the schedule that we created? So it is based on this schedule that the SLA would be taking. So if you have it 9 to 5, so it will take only 9 to 5. And then you add in the criteria. Remember I talked about the vast set of criteria that you have that you can select from. So this ticket, this SLA plan would be implemented only when, only for the tickets which are created in ticket department support. And then you can have the next criteria. You can have more criteria added. So that's the next one, ticket status. So you use AND or OR uh, operators here. So for ticket department support and ticket status open, this SLA plan would be implemented. And finally, you insert the plan. Next up is how to link an es escalation with the SLA plan that we just created. 
Here comes the escalation. Right below SLAs, there is an escalation option. There is one present again by default. And then you can hit new if you want to create a new one. There you go. So you could, again, it's similar. You have to give it a name for the escalation plan. And then you link it with the SLA plan that we created. So for example, it needs an SLA plan for which when goes over escalation has to trigger. So we link it with the SLA plan after which the, SLA, the escalation should trigger. And again, as I mentioned, you can go for it as a reply overdue. So you can decide whether you want it to trigger when the reply time goes overdue as per the SLA plan, or whether when the um, resolution goes overdue, or you want to escalate no matter whether it's the reply or the resolution which goes overdue, but you want it to be escalated when either of them goes overdue. So you have these three options. So we, here we have selected this one. And then you have this actions automated task that I talked about. So you decide if you want to assign it to someone or whether you want to change its flag because it becomes visible. So once you add a flag, so let's say you add orange flag to all your escalator tickets. That means when the ticket, when you view the ticket in your ticket views, you, it's straight up, you know that this ticket is escalated because it has had that orange flag added. And then you can change ticket priority automatically. And then again, as I mentioned about orange flag, you can add different kinds of flags or tag the ticket with escalated here. So there are, these are the different things that you can do. And then finally, you insert the plan. There you go. And then you can review your escalation plan. So that's it. Yay! You're done with both SLA and escalations, inserting SLA and escalation plans in the help desk. So that's that. And then here comes the interesting bit. Remember, I talked about analyzing data that we have in place. So this is what I was talking about. We'll go in detail. So once you have uh, all the SLA plans in place, what do we do with that data? We collect data over time, but what do we do, th uh, do with it? And how do we make decisions based on that? So this is all we are going to talk about here. So once you have the data, you have um, the privilege to run it against or compare it against the customer satisfaction. So let's say the product that someone purchased from your website was delivered within 12 hours and the customer gave you a very good rating. And then when you're comparing, and then there was uh, this another delivery that you made and it, was made, it wasn't made within the 24 hours that you promised to the customer and the customer gave you a bad rating. So when you compare data, you can clearly see that correlation that when you miss the promise that you made to the customer, the customer gave you a bad rating. That means this is where you need to work. This is the thing that you need to work on because that if you have signed that agreement, you have promised an agreement um, to your customer and you're providing service within that, the customer is happy with your service and it is creating value the, it, it is all back to the values that we were talking about creating for the business, for the for the customer, and ultimately for the for your own business. So this is the kind of data that you can extract from the SLAs in if you have them in place. Next up, uh, financial impact, and this can be quite an important one. Um, so let's say you are a service provider, and there is a downtime. You experience a downtime of two hours, and then in those two hours, you missed SLAs on 10 tickets. And those 10 people that you missed the SLA for, they came back asking for compensation that, OK, because, I, because you missed the SLA that you signed with them or that you promised them. And then um, the customer says, OK, I want compensation for that. And then you can clearly relate that we missed 10 ticket, SLA on, SLAs on 10 tickets during the downtime that we had. And because of that, we are paying this much money as part of the compensation. So you link these kind of things based on SLAs that 
you missed in a slave, when did you miss it? You missed it during the downtime. And if it is happening really often, that means you need to work on getting your system stable and you need to make sure that the downtime is kept to the minimum because it is ultimately making you pay a lot because you are paying your customers, you are compensating for that financially. So you impact the financial impact of missing the SLAs in this way. Next up um, is, you know, identify ticket type which misses SLA. So this can be quite handy. So let's say you have different kinds of requests. Uh, we'll go back to the example of, um, you know, an, an IT department and within internal customers. So let's say there are different kinds of tickets coming in. There are new joiner requests, there are lever requests, and there are laptop repair requests, and the uh, inventory requests, these kind of things. So uh, let's say uh, every time there is a new asset requested and the SLA is missed on that ticket, now, if you have that data in place and you can clearly see it right in graphical form right in front of you that every ticket which is created to uh, which is created to have or request an asset has missed an SLA. This means this is something to do with that kind of request which comes in. It could be that because you have to deal with external vendor and the vendor takes time, you miss an SLA on that ticket. It, it, this should make you think that you either need to extend the SLA plan or SLA agreement for that kind of request which comes in or you need to refine the process. So these are the things that you can extract if you have the SLA data in place. And last but not least, it helps you to scope workload as well. So like I mentioned about missing uh, SLAs on particular type, if you are missing SLAs not on a particular ticket type, but generally, then that, mean, that means you need to think about the, the team that you have, whether they are missing because of the lack of uh, skills, or whether they are missing because of the lack of knowledge, or whether because they, uh, because they have to deal with other people to get information, and you need to refine your internal processes as well. And if it is because of internal, internal processes, that means you need to think about bringing the efficiency. So these are all the three things that you can run from the data that you collect from the essays. So you can relate it with the customer satisfaction, financial impact, and different kinds of requests, and to schedule a work. And to talk about the workload that we have. So that's pretty much about SLAs in general. And now I'm going to hand it over to Kushal, and he'll be answering your questions that you might have. Thank you. OK, thank you very much, Sandeep. And I'm now going to begin answering the questions submitted during the webinar. As you know, we have the limited time here, so I'll be picking the common questions and try to answer maximum from the list. And you can still submit your questions or doubts and we'll make sure to follow up via email if we could not answer them here. So let's start and the first question is from Mr. Craig. He wants to know if it's, it is possible to pause the reply due time on a particular status. For example, if you are moving a ticket to a awaiting user reply status, you want to pause the SLA time. Mr. Craig, it's not possible to pause the SLA time. Instead, you can clear the reply due time on the ticket when you are moving to a particular status. You just need to enable a setting for that status and let me show you how you can do it. Just go to tickets and the statuses. Here you can select the required status and under the options tab you will see clear ticket reply deadline when set to this status. You just need to enable this option and click on save button. 
with this when you move any ticker to this particular status the reply due time on that ticket will automatically be cleared and the next time when user replied on that ticket the reply due time start again on that ticket and the next question is from Mr. Carroll and let me read his question is there any plan to have the reports respect to schedules that are set for the SLS for example average time for closure includes evenings and weekends while the SLA does not uh, yes Carol as of now the SLA reports does not counter the total resolution time or faster response time it is certainly in the engineering roadmap and we are working on it and it shall be available in the future is where you can exclude the weekends for the total resolution time of first response time reports I hope this answers your questions and next question is from mr. Tom and his question is we need to have a different reply due time between our support and sales team is that possible ah yeah it's a very good question Gary and you can certainly have different SLA plans for different teams you just need to create a different SLA plans by choosing different departments in the criteria let me show you how you can do it just go to SLA in the admin control panel and then go to plans here you will see the new button go to there and under the criteria you just need to select the department for example I am creating this SLA plan for the support just give it a title enter the required reply and resolution due deadlines and click on insert once it is inserted any ticket created in the support department will have the respective reply due and resolution due time and similarly you can create another SLA plan for another sales team or sales department select the required reply deadline and resolution deadline and under the departments list select the another department that's it in addition to that you have also option to insert multiple criteria with the different and or or options for example you want to show a different SLA plan for ticket departments sales and particular status in progress you can also choose the ticket priority or ticket owner as well I hope this answers your questions and the next question is if I have different queues on Kyako, how can I know how much time each queue have the taken for resolution and affecting SLA? And this question is from Mr. Manor. Mr. Manor, you can create get this data from the reports. You can create different reports to get the average response time, first response time, ticket resolution time and get the idea how much time it's taking to answer the queries for different departments you can have multiple criteria in the reports for example you can create the reports to get the SLA response time or re response time for the sales department for the support department separately and you can also link the queues to department or tag them with the parser rules to use rules to split it out for example you can create SLA plan for different departments and tag them with the parser rules for example under the S email parser rules you have the options of rules you can create a new rule and you have list of various criteria and you can choose the required department and under the actions tab you can specify the different actions where you can tag the, these requests or add a note of these requests so you can identify from where they are coming and the next question is from Sarah and her question is Kyako comes out of the box with US based as pre-configured is the a way to have at least our own country's holidays if not is the way to import a list of them so it is certainly possible to have your own holidays in the help desk you just need to go to SLA's holidays you can create your own holiday with the new button give it a title 
you can select the holiday date and you can also flag the icon with this holiday and you can also have option to link it with the particular SLA plan for example if you are creating SLA plan for different countries and there are holidays for linked to a specific country you can link this holiday to that particular SLA plan and this holiday will be applicable to only for those tickets which are linked to that particular SLA plan and you can also import the holiday pack from this import option under SLA section you have the import export option just to go to there and under the import choose the file which would be XML file and click on the import button all right sorry sorry to interrupt Kushal uh, we are yep. coming down to the end of our hour here so oh. um, I think we have time for one more question if that's okay yes sure um, okay great here we go yeah let me choose the question okay the next question is how to warn the user if the ticket is about to escalate for that's a very good question and we receive this request from many customers and I hope it will help other customers too to know how to warn a user or ticket owner before ticket is escalated in this case you need to create two different SLA plans for example if you are total reply due time is four hours you can create a one SLA plan for three hours and after escalating the ticket with that SLA plan you can notify the ticket owner or department to send a notification that your ticket is about to overdue in one hour and under the actions of that SLA plan, escalation rule you can link another SLA plan let me show you how you can do that while you are creating a escalation rule here you need to select the first SLA plan under which you want to escalate this ticket you can choose either escalation type reply or resolution and you have option here change the ticket SLA plan you can select another another SLA plan here when the ticket is escalated with SLA plan A you will notify the ticket owner from this notification step inside notification you have options staff owner whether you want to send the notification to staff owner staff team or whole department and the next when the ticket is escalated another SLA plan we applied and that would be of one hour so three plus one it would be total reply to hour on the ticket would be four hours okay Alicia I'm done with the question answers Okay, can you hear me? There we go. All right, thank you so much. That was a, a great Q&A session. Thank you all in our um, in our audience for those wonderful questions. Um, there were a few that we were not able to answer because of time, and we will follow up with you afterwards. Um, and so that, with that being said, uh, we are out of time, and we hope that you found this presentation to be very helpful. Thank you so much, Sandeep and Kashal, for your expertise in the last hour. And uh, that being said, feel free to always reach out to us uh, via email at support at kayaka.com, via live chat on any Kayaka website, or of course the Kayaka Help Center and forums. And that being said, thank you very much for your time and have a great day everyone.